Hi and welcome to this video. In this one, we're going to talk about Tailwind CSS variables. So hit that subscribe button and let's get started. We are going to talk about variables in the context of only colors. And that's going to give you a perfect idea of how to implement other kind of variables as well. To get started, let's go ahead and let's generate the simple HTML5 boilerplate and provide the Tailwind CSS along with the title. I'm going to grab the body of the document, give it a height of 100 bh, simple background color, uh, convert it to a flex layout, and I'm going to center all the items horizontally and center all the items vertically. Let's save our changes. Let's move forward. This div is going to have a height of 96 or 384 pixels. The same with a background color of pitch black. Uh, the text is going to be white. I'm going to convert this to a flex layout as well because I want the text to be exactly in the center of the div. Justify center is going to center it horizontally and item center is going to center it, center it vertically. Let's go ahead and let's create the other div, the main div. Uh, it's going to have the same dimensions, height 96 and width 96, which is 384, 384 for both dimensions. And I'm going to set it as position absolute. Let's save our changes. Now, the way that this is going to work is uh, we need to target Tailwind layers and we need to target Tailwind configuration. First things first, I'm going to create a style element and the type is going to be Tailwind. Uh, the way Tailwind works is by default, Tailwind ships with three layers. We have the base layer, the components layer, and the utilities layer. And since I'm creating variables, they are created within the root of the document or the HTML, actual HTML element. So I need to target the base layer. We are selecting the HTML using the root pseudo class. And the structure of the variable has to be exactly like the comment that I've provided. So we need to separate them using spaces. This is um, a more modern syntax as opposed to the legacy syntax where we used to separate RGB colors or HSL colors using commas. This is going to be our color primary. Keep in mind this format refers to RGB. So the first value 195, this is red. 255, this is green, 147, that is blue. And then for your reference, I'm going to create one for HSL. Now HSL is hue, saturation, lightness. So the first one is a degree. The second and the third values, they're going to be percentages. Now there is a forward slash and then the alpha value, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. This is the uh, color value for the HSL color. Let's go ahead and let's uh, apply these within the Tailwind configuration. So I'm going to create a script element right here, and I'm going to jump into Tailwind configuration, create a theme object. Now we need to extend colors. So I'm going to create an extent uh, object. And what do we extend? We extend colors. So let's create a colors object. The first color is going to be primary and we basically need to provide the blueprint for it. So var color primary, this is going to target the color from above and put it there. And if we want to provide an alpha value, we would just provide a forward slash and then the alpha value. And then boom, the color is going to be uh, shown on the web page. I am going to create one for secondary, but keep in mind, the primary is RGB, but the secondary is HSL. I'm going to target the second div and it's very simple. Uh, we are going to write BG hyphen and then the name of that color, either primary or secondary. And as soon as I save that, we can see the changes right there. Now, since this color is solid, it, it doesn't have any opacity or transparency, we can't see the item behind it. But if I try to add an opacity uh, of 95%, this is going to be 95% um, solid and then 5% transparent. And let's save the changes. We can barely see the text behind it. Let's change it to 80%. There is the text. Let's change it to 60%, change it to 40%, and let's change it to 20%. So this is how you would uh, apply the variable and then change the opacity or the alpha channel if you, if you want to. Let's apply the uh, secondary color as well. Let's save that. This is the secondary color. And in the same way, we just add a forward slash and a percentage, and it's going to basically toggle the amount of opacity. So the lower the amount of percentage, the higher the amount of transparency. All right. 
So if I provide AD, you can see the transparency is getting increased so we can see the item behind of our diff. That is it for this video. See you in the next one.